Hello, this is Stefan Norek from Conductor. And in this lecture, we're going to learn about Kafka producers. So Kafka producers are going to write data to topics. And remember, topics are made of partitions. Now the producers in Kafka, they will automatically know to which broker and partition to write to based on your message. And in case there is a Kafka broker failure in your cluster, the producers will automatically recover from it, which makes Kafka resilient and which makes Kafka so good and used today. So if we look at a diagram to have the data in our topic partitions, we're going to have a producer on the left-hand side sending data into each of the partitions of our topics. So how does a producer know how to send the data to a topic partition? Well, for this, we can use message keys. So alongside the message value, we can choose to send a message key. And that key can be whatever you want. It could be a string, it could be a number, whatever you want. And it turns out that if you don't send a key, the key is set to null, so no key, then the data will be sent in a round robin fashion to make it very simple. So that means that your first message is going to be sent to partition zero, and then your second message to partition one, and then partition two, and so on. This is why it's called round robin. But in case you are sending a key with your message, then all the messages that share the same key will always go to the same partition. So this is very, very important uh, property of Kafka, because that means that if you need ordering for a specific field, for example, if you have our trucks and you want to get all the GPS positions in order for that specific truck, which makes a lot of sense, then you need to make sure to have your message key set as the unique identifier for your truck, so truck ID. And so in our example, for the truck's GPS uh, example, we need to choose the message key to be equal to truck ID so that we have all the truck positions for that one specific truck in order as part of the same partition. So let's take an example again. If we have the producer sending data to two partitions and the key is truck ID, then truck ID 123, for example, will always go in partition zero. Truck ID 234 as well will always go in partition zero. And 345 and 456 will always go in partition one. The idea here, again, is that you will never find the truck ID 123 data in partition one because of this key property we just mentioned. So now let's discuss what does a Kafka message look like. So the Kafka messages are created by the producer. And the first very important concept we discussed is the key. The key can be null and the type of the key is a binary. So binary is zeros and ones. But as I said, it can be strings and numbers. And we'll see this how this happens to convert a string or a number into a binary in the very next slide. So we have the key, which is a binary field, which can be null. And then we have the value which is the content of your message. And again, this can be null as well. So the key and value are some of the two most important things in your message, but there are other things that go into your message. For example, your message can be compressed. And so the compression type can be indicated as part of your message. For example, none means no compression, but we have four different kinds of compressions available in Kafka. We have gzip, snappy, lz4, and zstd. We also have optional headers for your message. So headers are pairs of key value, and you can have many of those in part of one message. And it is common to set them in case you're trying to add metadata to your messages. Once a message is sent into a Kafka topic, then it will receive a partition number and an offset ID. So the partition and the offset are going to be part of the Kafka message. And then finally, a timestamp alongside the message will be added either by the user or by the system and then that message will be sent to Kafka. So remember I said that the key is a binary and the value is a binary. But when we start writing some messages in Kafka, we're obviously going to use some higher level objects. And so to transform these objects into binaries, we're going to use producer serializers. So serializers will indicate how to transform these objects into bytes, and they will be used for the key and the value. So say for example that we have the value to be hello world, and that's a string, and the key to be one, two, three, and that's an integer. In that case, we need to set the key serializer to be integer serializer. And what this will do internally is that it will convert that integer into bytes. And these bytes will be part of the key, which is going to be binary. Same for the value, which is hello world as a string. 
we're going to use a string serializer as the value serializer to convert that string into bytes. And again, this is going to give us our value as part of a binary field. And so some common serializers are going to be string serializers, including JSON. If your data is a JSON, and then you may want to use a string serializer. Uh, integer and floats for numbers. Avro and protobuf for advanced kind of data. And we'll see those later in this course. OK, so that's all you need to know for your producers. Now let's go into Conductor to practice them and send our first messages into our Kafka topics. So I will see you in the next lecture.